Hello everyone and welcome aboard. We have a very special boat today for you. I've done big boats, I've done some small boats, and today we're doing a tender, but not just any tender, what is possibly the world's biggest tender, Fan Dutch 55. So let's jump in and check it out. All right, so I know what you're thinking. Jake, why are we calling a 55 foot express convertible top sport yacht a tender? Well, if you're familiar with Formula One racing or if you're familiar with Europe or the Mediterranean, you'll know that these boats are used all the time, constantly, for taking people to and from shore to the mega yachts over in the Mediterranean. Here on the West Coast, they're their own animals. Over there, they like to be used as tenders. There's even a boat called Ulysses, which is a traveling sport mega yacht. And that thing has two of these, the 55s, strapped to each side of it, all the way up in the air. That's why we're calling it a tender today. Not much of a tender for most of us, but it is in fact a million dollar tender. While we're on the outside of it here, let's go ahead and take a look. Now, the first thing that you notice when you see this boat is its striking lines and also its color. Now, this boat comes in a range of different colors. There's charcoals, there's blues, oranges, straight blacks. This is my favorite one because at night during sunset, this metallic shines orange and reflects all the colors of the atmosphere, which is just incredible when you see it at night. And you know what else looks incredible once you see it? Our new lineup of the Captain's Review merchandise over at thecaptainsreview.com. Go check it out. We have new shirts like the You Scratch My Anchor, the Fender Bender, and the Gone Fishing. You guys will love them. That is thecaptainsreview.com. Great fit, great shirts. Go check it out to support the channel. We really appreciate it. Now, the other thing I used to always get asked a lot, I used to run this boat pretty extensively, is how does it handle in the water? Because you notice it has this giant bow right here that goes straight up and there's not very much flare. Well, the thing I'll tell you is that the boat actually rides when you're underway on a plane pretty much back here. So this whole front of the bow, which I'll show you guys in a little video clip here, this whole front of the bow is pretty much out of the water. This flare you see right here on the side of the vessel and deflects most of the water that comes up. Now, don't get me wrong, I've definitely sprayed myself with this boat in following seas going a little too quickly but for the most part, it's actually pretty dry. As we head back to the stern of the vessel, you will notice the big windshield and also these recessed cleats. You use two hands, you pinch these things on both sides and then they drop down. They're pretty sizable and sturdy. As we approach the stern, we have a swim platform, swim step with a ladder centered in the middle of it right there. And then underwater lights go all the way around the boat because you got to look good at night. As you hop on, small flag mount, and then two 30 amp shore power cords over here on the starboard side of the stern. There's also controls for them over here in what are the fender compartments. However, they also look like they would make really great places to store dive tanks. So I've never tried to put a dive tank in them, but I mean, they couldn't look any more set up for dive tanks. Behind me as you come on, you got the big sun platform back here. The sun platform has a garage underneath it that you can flip up and there's room for paddle boards or inflatable paddle boards, not hard paddle boards, but inflatable paddle boards and just some sort of water gear inside of here. And then as you move up the port side, you can see all those fenders stored away and then the bench side of the swim platform. The boat has JL audio speakers all throughout. These ones are eight inches. Uh, there's one on each side, two more up in the front, and then there's two big subwoofers underneath this deck right here. I'll do my best to show you guys that. This all flips up and we'll cover that in a moment. In the center of the vessel is a table with cup holders all the way through the middle of it. This table actually slides backwards and forwards, but it's been locked in right now. And then it also rotates and spins. If for whatever reason you want to remove the table, it's very easy. Two big bolts underneath it will lift it up and out. As you come forward on both the starboard and port side of the vessel, you have coolers, and these aren't just any coolers, these are built-in electric coolers. 
also on both port and starboard side. But this seat here, as well as this seat, which you can tell is up, raises and lowers, more speakers on each side. And then as we come to the port side, we get to the helm. Now the helm's real simple. It has a way to become taller. So you can stand on this and you can see over the bow. Um, it's pretty easy to see when you're underway at idle. When you're underway moving fast, the bow does stay pretty level when you use the Humphrey trim tab system to adjust, but it can get pretty high up there depending on how tall you are. Next to the Humphrey system, we have our Volvo throttles and our forward and stern side power thrusters. And then on the other side of the Volvos, we have two identical Simrad screens, great for controlling music, as well as GPS and everything else you need. The only thing it doesn't offer is radar, because as you can see, the boat has no radar arch or radar system. And lifting this up, we can head over here and we can check out the Volvo engine displays. Those are located right here on the port side, as well as all of your standard helm switches, horn, your batteries, your bilge pumps, your nav lights. Underneath, we have some controls for the subwoofer, fire extinguisher system, the ignition over here, and the bimini top, which comes up and down. I'll show you guys that here briefly. As well as stern lights, this boat also has lights that wrap around the entire deck and light it up and make it pretty. All right, and then before we jump inside, let's jump into a few more compartments back here. This cushion right here, as you can see, has bimini support systems behind it and same on the other side. Underneath me, right here, which I'll show you guys momentarily, you flip it up and then the whole bimini comes up over and then you lock it into place. One here in this port and then another port forward up the helm over here and then on the other side as well. See these little holes right here? You pop them in place there and then it supports the entire bimini and it's actually on a button. So all you have to do is get the hatch up and then just push the button and the whole thing will come up. So now that this hatch is up, you can see how the bimini curves around the boat and how they cut out the section for it to fit under the deck. Then you can flip it up and hook it into those spots that I mentioned earlier. Then next to that, we have one more compartment right here. And this compartment is identical on the other side and what it does is it acts as storage and access to some of your systems. Like for example, we have some breakers down here, some Xantex power systems, your inverter. Uh, this is the back of the giant JL subwoofer. And then the fuel tank is right here as well. And the fuel shutoff valve is there. And this tank is the tank for the whole boat and it runs the whole width of the boat and holds about 650 gallons of diesel. Get the engine hatch lift it up and perform a little Christian test for you guys. The engine hatch, as you can see, is on a giant piston, hydraulic piston that pushes it all the way up. I don't actually know what would happen if we didn't have power on the boat. I'm guessing that somewhere on the boat, there is an auxiliary like jump start leads, kind of like what you'd have on a electric car so you can get into this because all the batteries are underneath here. If the boat's dead, I don't really know how this comes up. There's no other access to it. I'm sure that there is a way though. There's gotta be. So then you enter this little ladder and voila, twin D13, 900 horsepower, Volvo engines driven by a V-drive system. Really simple and easy engine compartment. I really like it. Battery switches over here in the front, as well as your fire extinguisher system. On this side, these are for your giant exhaust. They wrap all the way around the boat on this side, and then on this side, they just shoot right down. Underneath me, battery systems and other sea strainers up here in the front. This is removed off little pins here, so you can move the ladder, get to your sea strainers, clean them, check them out under that compartment up there. So then as you go back here, you have your generator sitting over the steering rack. Real simple, Cummins, Onan, and that pretty much covers the entire engine room for this boat. Really easy, super simple. You have a hose up here for the shower. Let me see if I can give you guys a Christian test now and get behind one of these engines. I'm guessing it's gonna be not too difficult. I mean, I used to do it, I'm trying to remember. See where I can prop you up, probably on this other engine, right? Back here maybe, just like that. All right, 
over the mounts for the struts, and then you're on the other side. So there's not a lot of headroom back here, but there's a ton of space. I'll show you guys on the other side. The exhaust slips back here and I can still crawl all the way through to the front. No issues whatsoever. All the filters are over here, so everything's got to be pretty easy to get to. We'll head back and jump into the other side and I'll bring you guys with me this time so you can check it out. This is what I was talking about over here on this side. A lot of space. And then let's jump in over here. This is the port side. The port side actually has less space, but it seems to still have some space. So as you guys can see, it's a little bigger than the width of this. So you could squeeze back here if you really need to. Christian test, not too hard. Let's jump out. And I want to show you one more thing up at the bow. Then we can jump inside the interior. All right, let's jump up on the bow. This is kind of unique as we're going up to the bow. It doesn't have standard ways to get in for fuel, waste, and water. Instead, it has a special key, like a security key. You have to put in and twist to open all of it. I guess maybe for diesel, like if you're really worried someone's gonna steal all your diesel fuel, it makes sense, but it's kind of a funny, funny system. So up here at the bow, I know you guys are thinking, where's the anchor? How do we get an anchor in the water? Well, I'll show you guys right now. First off, if you're wondering where the nav light is, there it is, but now let's get the anchor. I'm gonna preface this by saying that if you're in an emergency and you have to get your anchor down, you're not gonna be able to do it. If something happens and you lose power and you're drifting, like you have to go through this whole process I'm about to show you to get the anchor out. Step one, open this hatch. Step two is set down your GoPro from filming because you can't do it with one hand. What I usually do, I get down, I make sure that the chain is loose by using the Trustly wind windlass chain. So the chain's loose, which is good. The reason that needs to be loose is because if it puts too much tension on it, you won't be able to unlock the mechanism to fold the anchor out. So then you flip this little thing up right here. You push this pin over right here. It releases this anchor system to fold up into this gap right here. And then you lock it into place like that. And then if you tighten up on this, you take the tension off the pin there, you pull the pin out, now you can drop your anchor. And then you just have to do the opposite to put it away. So like I mentioned, not really something you're gonna be doing in an emergency if you're underway. I mean, if you had enough time, you would come up here and do it, but if it was like a real emergency, you're not gonna be able to get that anchor down. But that's all right, because it's a tender. It's a really big tender. And now that's it for everything. We can jump inside and show you guys the interior. All right, coming down into the vessel. First thing you notice, mirrors everywhere. This whole thing's surrounded by mirrors, which is actually great because it gives the boat sort of the feel like there are windows down here when really there's not. As you saw from the outside of the boat, there are no portholes in this whole thing. The mirrors make it feel a little bigger and it does actually feel a lot bigger. Also stainless trim everywhere around that's also mirrored. Above, we have two hatches, which allow for air. Both of these hatches have ocean air screens, one mesh and one full dark. The galley over on the starboard side has cabinetry throughout the whole thing. Parties, cups, microwave in this one, small stove here with a small fan system above it. More cabinetry for drinks and everything down below. Over here on the right of the sink is your refrigerator, both the freezer and refrigerator. And then underneath is an ice maker. One thing that's really neat about the galley is you'll notice that there is a couch behind me. Well, there's actually a TV hidden behind this mirror. This is actually a one-way mirror. And there's a television behind it. And at night, when all the lights are off and the light's low, you can see the TV come through that mirror and you can watch television from this couch over here. Going forward, you'll see the master stateroom, which is actually just part of the rest of the vessel but there's a very large bed up here. It is a king, semi a king, narrower obviously, but just as long. Um, I'm six feet, I can lay across the whole thing. And then cabinetry around the whole upper part of it. Back here on the port side is that couch that we showed you. Underneath the couch there is storage and then there's also cabinetry up top. As you moved aft on the port side, this is the only room in here with an actual door that is sleeping quarters. There are two twins, 
One of them that goes down the port side and then one of them that goes across right there. Not a super spacious room, but not bad if you're only sleeping in this twin. I've done it before, it's actually very comfortable. More storage space over here. And then this mirror on this side under the staircase is where all your controls are. Actually a pretty thorough control system. DC up top, AC on the bottom, gauges for both, battery banks, gen, startup, auxiliary, domatic, tells you you're fresh and you're, which you can see, I'm just getting pumped out now. And then a master 110 and an Xantrex inverter. Pretty useful equipment system here. And then if you go back out and head over to the starboard side, this is where the head for the vessel is. Only one head on this vessel. And it also doubles as a shower room. And the one thing that is nice, which is why I'm in here, is it has a pretty cool touch system. It knows when you get close to it, so it lights up. And then you just push before if you wanna add water and after if you want to flush. Nice, easy, simple, great for guests to understand. And that covers the inside of the Van Dutch 55. All right, so that completes our walkthrough of the Van Dutch 55. For those of you that aren't familiar with Van Dutch, all their models, the exterior of them, the whole design are all the same, just different scales from like 75 to like 30 feet, and the interiors of them differ slightly. So depending on how big the boat is, it's how much stuff they can fit into it. For example, on like the 40s and 35s, they don't have this big interior space like this one does. Other than that, all the lines look really similar and the styling's all the same. So with that, let's jump into our stars for this boat. For practicality, our first category, this boat gets a three for practicality. The reason being is that it is very big, very nice, but doesn't have that many staterooms or that much space for people to actually live on board, which is what a lot of people are looking for in boats this size. If you're not looking for that, if you're looking for having a ton of fun, this is your boat. But for that reason, practicality gets three stars. For styling, this boat gets an obvious five stars. It looks great. It is awesome when it goes out there on the water. Beautifully styled boat, colors excellent. For handling, this boat gets five stars. It gets that because the way the boat is shaped, it's kind of a flat bottom and it sits really deep with the weight of the boat. So it carves really nicely, as you can see in some of these photos I have here. Moving on to performance, the boat also gets five stars. It is a performance boat because it has a 1800 horsepower twin package Volvo system, and it moves really fast. This boat will get up to about 35 knots. Getting into comfort, this boat is gonna get three stars for comfort. Similar to practicality, a lot of the same reasons. The boat is comfortable, don't get me wrong. You can lay out in the sun, you can have a good time, you can relax in this bed down here. The AC works really nicely. However, if the day isn't perfect weather day, if it's raining, if it's cold, if there's any other little things, you start to lose on comfort real quick, uh, just because there's no permanent top, there's no Isinglass, uh, just a bimini. So for comfort, it gets three stars. Moving on to technology, this boat gets a three for technology. The reason is, great sound system, brand new Simrad units and everything like that. It's got everything it would need to have to have like all the best technology, except for radar. I would say that like a five star for technology would be like thermal vision, and all kinds of you know crazy aftermarket go the distance tech four would be full brand new radar system equipment everything like that so i'm gonna give this boat a three just because it doesn't have that radar to like really get to like that level of everything you need for a boat you can't really travel at night even though it has a great sound system even though it has a great gps system the humphrey trim tabs are great like the technology is there it's just you can't travel at night and that's pretty dangerous so for that reason i give it a three for value, I also give this boat a three for value, but only because I think that brand new, they go for like 1.5 million, which is a huge sum of money for something like this. I think if you can afford it, it's totally worth it. I buy one, they're sick. But just in the grand scheme of what you're getting for a boat with that much money, I think that you, know, you could get a lot more for like one and a half million dollars. But I mean, in this market, the way inflation's going, it, maybe not, so. For that, I give value three stars. For party boat, we're back to the fives. Five stars for party boat. Sound system on this thing, huge subwoofers, four eight inch jails all the way around. The big deck for everyone to hang out on. Everyone's looking at you, waving, saying hi. Uh, it's not gonna get a better party boat than a Van Dutch. For repairability, this is what gets really tough with this boat. It's mostly made in Europe. Some of the parts are super custom, like that big windshield up top. For repairability, I'm gonna give it a two. It gets a two because like there's a bunch of Volvo stuff and the Volvo stuff's good. And you know, the side thrusters, everyone uses those kind of things, but it's just 
so difficult sometimes to deal with Van Dutch's supply chain issues and everything that's going on in Europe. I know we just went through a crisis, but it's just hard to get stuff from them. And for that reason, I'm gonna give it a two. I mean, most of the components are pretty simple. It's just really hard to get a hold of them from Van Dutch. And then last but not least, Fun Factor. Fun Factor gets five stars because let's be honest, you're not gonna have more fun than on this boat right here. Day in the sun, drinks, coolers up top, everything you need. I mean, this thing's got it. It's essentially the world's most nicest, largest pontoon boat that also isn't made out of pontoons. So for party boat category, it's five stars. That brings our total for the Van Dutch 55 to 39 stars, which makes it one of the most highest rating boats I've ever done. I know that some of you guys might look at it and think, oh, that thing's not practical at all. I want a sport fisher. I want a bait tank. I want a live well. Well, fortunately for you guys in the categories that I have written out and made, it gets five stars in most of them. Fun factor, party boat, handling, styling, performance. In those five categories, it's perfect. So for that reason, 39 stars. And today I went with the Van Dutch Vice t-shirt, but you can get the rest of the Captain's Review merchandise. We have a new summer job coming out with things like the You Scratch My Anchor t-shirt, the Gone Fishing, and of course the Fender Bender. So go check those out at thecaptainsreview.com as well as the rankings for all of these vessels. And with that, thank you for sailing with us.